Betty Brooke, as promised, talking to you today about um, talking about things when you have opposing points of view, which seems to be something that a very few of us are really capable of doing because I've noticed that on my Facebook feed, when that happens, it tends to digress into um, attacking, which I think we are in danger of losing that ability to have um, intelligent dialogue when we have differences. Because when we come from things, um, from an attitude of um, we're right, the other person's wrong, that's where we set up ourselves for problems. Hi, Carrie, good to see you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna be talking about um, how to talk about these difficult subjects when we have completely opposing points of view and how we can work at um, being able to have a intelligent dialogue. So the first part of that is to um, come into it with an attitude of respect. So we'll talk some more about that. The second thing is to be able to recognize when we're flooded and we can't um, express ourselves in a logical, rational, calm way. Um, the third way is to the third thing is to recognize when somebody else is flooded and not being able to communicate in a rational, calm way. Um, and the fourth thing is how to um, help ourselves to stay calm. So. Um, Hi there, uh, looks like we have a couple people on I haven't talked to you before. Hi, Ann, Alan. Um, if, if you haven't been on before, please um, tell me where you're from and um, give me any ideas or thoughts you have. Hey there. Um, so, um, so the very first thing is to um, come into it with an attitude of respect to begin with, which I know sometimes can be really difficult because when we have a lot of intense feelings about a particular point of view, we can start off kind of flooded. So. So that will put you in a situation where you're not necessarily being respectful and you might be already on a position of that this person is wrong. And even if, and sometimes believe me, on, on my Facebook page I get a lot of people who come in with um, inaccurate data, who, who really um, struggle with being able to come do their own research and, and understand um, where they're coming from. So. And, and I also understand that we, we have conflicting sources of data, which, by the way, um, when I'm working with couples, that's a really big thing to recognize is that, you know, what, what makes sense and is logical to me is not necessarily what makes sense and is logical to my partner. Likewise, when you're having a discussion with somebody on, on points of view that are different from yours, the data set that you have is different from the data set that they have. So when you can start off, by um, recognizing and respecting the fact that th that their point of view may be um, completely different from yours because they're operating from a different set of data than what you do. So that can start you off from a place of respect when you come from a place of recognizing that um, just because they are saying something that you totally don't agree with doesn't mean that they are not basing that logically and rationally off of a set of data that you don't have access to. So it's important to recognize that that set of data that that other person has is just as valid to them as your set of data is to you. So when you can start from that point of view of they are um, people who are like you, good-hearted human beings who are trying to do the best they can, which by the way is where I come from in every single relationship I have and every single relationship I try to help mend is to help people understand that everyone is doing the best they can given the experiences that they have, the data that they have, and now that data may be flawed and the experiences they have may have skewed their points of view in particular directions, that that doesn't mean it's not valid. So starting off with an acceptance of and respect for that person's point of view, regardless of how off the wall it may seem to you. And believe me, sometimes I get stuff on my page that I'm like, really, you think that? Um, but it is possible to go, okay, well, this is how they're seeing it based on the information that they have at this time. So, hi, Shanna. Hi, Christy. Um, so, so recognizing that whatever data that person has is 
based upon the, the knowledge base that they have, whether it's their personal experience or um, in something that they've read, accurate or inaccurate, it is, it is what is the data set that they're coming from. And to try to convince them that they're wrong and bad for having that point of view is a setup for a conflict and for things to degrade rapidly. Where we get into real trouble is um, when we start to consider the other person's point of view as, as being completely wrong, bad, uh, poor judgment, etc. cetera. Um, and the, the other place that we get into trouble with is when we get flooded by an emotional reaction to what they're saying which in today's world when there's racism and there's abuse and there's sexism and there's sexual abuse and you know all of these things in the news and political differences that are just you know hugely diverse then we we get into a danger zone when we start getting emotionally reactive to that and when we are emotionally reactive as I've talked about many times before our our old brain takes charge that primitive um reactive survival reflex kicks in and we find ourselves flooded with emotions and we're not able to use our good logical um, brain because we have a new brain that developed you know the third part of our brain to develop in utero is that part of our brain where we can um, make good judgments and have language skills and um, be able to be rational and logical about things well when we care a lot about something it makes it more difficult for us to stay in that rational thought process. So we end up getting very emotional and we react in ways that are not logical and that cause, it causes us to not be able to hear what the other person is saying. Because it's, if we're going to have dialogue, and I think we have to have dialogue, especially because what's happening right now in, um, is that there are forces out there that benefit from our being at each other's throats. It's that divide and conquer thing, right? That's what's happening not only in the United States, but across the board, all across the planet right now. There are forces that are working at trying to separate us out, get us into these large groups and so that we fight each other rather than looking at the bigger picture and and figuring out a solution for the, the problems that affect all of us. So it's, it's an important thing to, to try to stay rational even when the data that's coming to us doesn't make any sense and doesn't feel rational or logical to us. Because if we can be open and empathetic and respectful to other people and own responsibility that this is our point of view, even if it doesn't match the reality that somebody else has, you know, I. I know that um, a lot of the really, really far right people that do stay connected on my page um, are really good at being able to stay present and not get overly reactive. And I've lost some people who, who can't do that. But if you can stay open and not reactive and you can be respectful of each other, re part of that comes from being able to, to really get it that most of us are coming from a place of love, regardless of how it may seem. Now, I know there are exceptions to that, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, I will assume that people are coming from a place of love and well, well, good intentions, that we are all patriots, that we all want the best for our country, that we all want the best for each other. And when you can come from that point of view, no matter what the other person says, it's easier not to get reactive to it, even if we don't agree, even if we see what, what they're saying doesn't make any logical sense to us, but they have a different data set than we have. Um, for example, there are lots of people who, um, hey Glenn Earl, um, who are gathering data from sources that may, from my point of view, are um, tainted, um, that are not, um, they're not actually based in, in, um, in what is documented fully true, um, but yet it is what they have gathered to be true. So there's a lot of um, conspiracy theorists sort of people who, who will look at, and I, I have to say I am one of those people, I have been one of those people, so I understand that point of view. But what happens is when you start believing something, it can take you down a, a rabbit hole to, to look for um, 
uh, uh, things that agree with that point of view. And I don't care if you're a liberal or um, far right person. If you have a if you hold on to a particular point of view, it can skew you down research that is only going to confirm what you believe. So if you are if you're able to stay open minded, and that is a very tricky thing. It's a very tricky thing. Uh, because because we all have so many emotions attached to the things we believe in and it's very difficult for a person to shift off of that hard set belief about something unless they're able to take in new data and it's very hard to take in new data when your old brain is flooded with emotions so when we get defensive when we get reactive when we get um, our adrenal adrenal system, adrenal system kicking with um, defensiveness and self-righteousness and convinced that our point of view is the only point of view, then we end up being more reactive and less able to take in new data because we can't take in logical, rational data when we're flooded. So, so learning to become aware of when we're flooded and then also becoming aware of when someone else is flooded. I know a lot of time on my page, um, people will start having dialogues. They'll, I'll, I'll post something and, and a couple of my friends will start having dialogues with each other. And it's funny because sometimes it happens that I know these two people are very, very much aligned. And yet for some reason, this particular topic has sparked off of a lot of feelings for someone and they end up having a terrible fight and saying terrible things to each other. And I end up having to go in and go, okay guys, you've crossed the line. And you're obviously very reactive here and just cutting off the dialogue but, and I will block um, and I will delete if um, if it goes too far so be aware that when people get flooded it's because there's something attached to whatever that topic is it hits on a personal note and makes them particularly defensive and reactive and might behave in ways that they don't normally behave so when we start to see that happening, we can pay attention to the fact that, okay, this person's flooded, they're not thinking rationally, this isn't their normal self, this isn't their adult rational self in charge, and they are, um, hi Larry. Um, so when that happens, then the conversation's not gonna go well. So um, it's best to just stop, unless you just are really enjoying a good fight, which some people do. I don't particularly enjoy that, but I know some people like a good fight and just like to, to spit it all out there that gives them a sort of a, a release and makes them feel better to have said all those things. But when we do that at the expense of another person, it, it's, it, it, it's not good for us um, karmically, it's not good for us emotionally, it's not good for the relationships, and it's not even logical or rational because when we're in that place, we're working out of a part of our brain that isn't rational, isn't logical, and it can set us up to not only hurt other people, but in the end, hurt ourselves. So becoming aware of when we're flooded and when someone else is flooded is really key to being able to have those dialogues. So. I know that um, when we're talking about things like racism and um, sexual trauma and um, um, immigration and, um, and legal um, things like uh, prisons and the, a lot of the things that are happening you know, in, in the world as a whole that we all feel emotionally attached to because I know it's really easy to, to get totally reactive and not be able to listen to the other person's point of view. But when we do that, we are feeding into the, um, a larger agenda, which is to split us up, to bite us and conquer us. So the more that we can work against that, even in, in these small little dialogues that we have on Facebook or that we have between um, associates, and we can be respectful enough to recognize that every single one of us is doing the best we can and every single one of us at heart is is coming from a place that n intends good it doesn't necessarily mean it always is good but it comes from a place that intends good and if we can come from that acceptance of each other as people who are working you know i think that in fact i think that's what has kept up until now um, the decorum in our political system has been a respect for that each of us is trying to make this country a better place even if we don't agree about how to go about doing that. So that's where we need to be coming from in order to change this um, division that is that is getting fed by a force that's, um, I think its intention is to divide us, then we are working 
in, in a resistance of sorts to that negative influence, which is set up to, to divide us so that we will be fighting among each other over these issues rather than coming together and working a, as a unified whole. And I do believe that we need all points of view in order to make progress in any area because each of us can become, as I was saying earlier, each of us can become skewed off in um, finding justification for our points of view, which causes us to only look for things that, that validate our viewpoint rather than looking at the bigger picture and being able to see multiple viewpoints. So being able to, um, hi Robert, uh, being able to step back and being able to accept that each of us has valid points of view and um, hi Donna Kay, awesome, good to see you. Um, so the more we can open our hearts to the reality that each of us is coming from a point of view of, of wanting the best for all of us, then the more we are likely to respond more respectfully to each other. Because when we, when we are on the defensive and when that old brain is kicked in, we're not going to respond respectfully with empathy to the other person's reactions. What we're going to do is gonna be fighting for our point of view and telling that person how wrong they are and when that happens, we encourage that divide, we push that split wider, and it makes it more difficult for us to really make lasting um, change, not only in the overall dialogue, but in, in our country at large. Because I do believe that without all of the points of view, we are not getting the whole picture. Even, you know, I, I think it's important to have, as, as people on my page know, um, you know, I am a person who believes in our right to choose, but I also think when it comes to um, uh, abortions, I think we, a woman has to have the right to choose for herself what is right for her. But I also think it's important that we have people fighting for um, the right to life in that I think that without that balance, people could go too far and, and make, um, make uh, abortion become a birth control of sorts, and that's not good. So we, we need this balance in order to function more wholly and healthfully as a, as a culture. And abortion is just one of, one of those many issues. I think um, the issue of um, what's happening with guns is the same way, right? If we need people who are making sure that we have our Second Amendment followed, we also need people who are going, wait a second, we need to get this gun situation in, in, under uh, control a little bit because too many people are dying. We need both points of view in order for us to come to a place where we do things that make sense because without each of those points of view we're going to end up um, being autocratic in some way so i think it's really important that we be respectful and empathetic with each other's points of view even when that point of view is completely opposite especially when that point of view is completely opposite of yours so learning to be respectful and learning to recognize that need for being aware of when our old brain is in charge and when we're flooded and when we're behaving in ways that are not rational, when our language skills go out the window and we start cursing at each other and calling each other names, what ends up happening is not only do we block the avenues for new information, we also um, block our avenue for connection with another person. And it prevents us from, from staying unified as a citizenship. It prevents us from be, be, becoming unified as a community. So the, the more respectful and empathetic we can be with the other person's reactions. So just, so say somebody does get reactive. Somebody gets really ugly and reactive on your page. We're in a conversation. What you can do is be empathetic for that. And because I'm, I'm quite certain there have been times when you have also done that, when you have gotten overly reactive, when you have said things you didn't really mean. We've all done it from time to time, and we've all gotten hooked and behaved in ways that we weren't proud of. So when we can be empathetic for the other person getting into that stance, it prevents us from going back and being just as reactive in, in response to their reactiveness, right? So the more we react to their reactiveness, the bigger the reactions can become and the more dangerous that can become because ultimately 
I, I don't think that people um, end up whipping out guns and shooting each other until that's happened, until somebody's attacked and somebody else is attacking back and somebody else is attacking back and the emotions are so huge that they can't contain it anymore. And then later they're like, I don't know what happened. I just blacked out because you get so flooded with emotions that you're unable to even recall what it was that you did. Obviously that's an extreme, but it can happen even on Facebook. Um, it can happen in interpersonal co conversations where we, we just lose track of what's happening and we don't slow down, back up, and take the time to recognize the humanity of the person that we're talking to. It's so easy, it's like driving in your car, right? Somebody cuts you off in traffic and you say things that you wouldn't normally say. Same thing happens on Facebook. Somebody reacts and you you know, you know say things back to, because there's an, a bit of an anonymity on Facebook, just like there's that an, an, anonymity in your car where you don't recognize that that is a human being in that other vehicle, or you don't really recognize that there's another human being on the other side of that comment. So the more that we can slow down and recognize and have empathy for the other person's reactions, we don't have to even understand why they had that reaction, because there've been plenty of times um, I've, I've read conversations on my Facebook page where I understood where someone was coming from. It happened recently with a dear friend of mine. I understood exactly why he was reacting the way he was. I knew why that was a hot button for him. And I knew that the things that he was saying that later on he would know he had been over the top with. But in that moment, he was saying the things that were absolutely true to him. And, and he was getting into this huge argument with somebody and saying some really horrible things to each. And the other person was reacting to his reactions. And it did not go well. I ended up having to delete a bunch of comments. But what I recognized is, and I had empathy for, was that this is, an, this is a topic that had touched him personally and was very painful to him. So when we can have that kind of empathy for another person, it can, hi Rosemary, it can help us to um, respond differently to their reactiveness. So one of the, 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 the big key is being able to slow down and go, wait a second, what is really going on with that person? Because clearly there's something painful here. When a person is um, angry, underneath anger is always hurt or fear. So when you're reacting out of hurt or fear, it's gonna sometimes come out really badly. And when on the, as the recipient of that, which I have to say is very difficult to do, but if you are the recipient of that, if you can provide them with empathy, it can take the, the power out of their attack because what's happening is they're in this um, self-protective place where they feel like they have to protect themselves and they have to do it loudly, they have to, have to do it aggressively, they have to do it in you know, maybe ways that don't make logical sense to people watching, but from their point of view, it's absolutely necessary for their survival in that moment. So if we can provide them empathy with recognizing that they are in a lot of pain, that they are in a place of fear, they're in a place of hurt, and respond with empathy to that, then it can, can start to change the dialogue because then you have provided them an opening to find out what's really going on. And it p helps you to step back and not get as emotionally uh, um, engaged in that battle with them when you say, wait a second, and coming back to the reality of it, it being that it, it is never about you. Even if it's pointed directly at you and they're calling you names and saying this is you, it's not about you. I guarantee you 100% of the time, it is not about you. It is about something that's going on inside of them based on their past experience, based on their knowledge base, based on whatever their reality is. And when we can accept that it's not about us, no matter how ugly they get, then we can respond with, wait, wait, what's going on here? Because I can, I, I can sense that you're really hurting around this issue. Tell me more about that. And be open and curious about what it is that's going on with them and provide them some empathy and it can shift the whole dialogue. At which point you can be open yourself then to take in the new data that can help you change how you're perceiving their point of view. It can allow you actually to even perhaps change your point of view if you're able to stay with it and be empathetic for where they're coming from. Because a lot of times um, these dialogues are 
are so reactive and so um, self-protective that we, we lose connection with what the underlying issue is in terms of the heart of the matter. And then we cannot anymore have a conversation where we're actually working toward connection, where we're working toward understanding, where we're look, working toward gaining new data that's going to help us, it's going to help the other person, and, and have that important dialogue that allows us to have a balanced view of things because we cannot get a balanced view of things if we're reactive or if we're defensive, if we're seeing the other person as the enemy, as the bad guy in the conversation, or if we're believing that whatever they're saying is an attack on us personally. When we get trapped into that, that's when no dialogue can go further and we get pushed further into the, that divide, which forces us off into these corners where we're attacking each other instead of unifying to resist the larger picture of what's happening um, in not just our country, but in the world today. And the more we can do this, the more we can move ourselves toward healing. So what do you do when a person is so angry and storms out of the room? Um, again, that's about being empathetic. So you, when, when that happens, and it, it happens because a person has flipped into the self-protect mode and they're, they're um, old brain is saying, just get out of here, flee the situation. And you, you give them, giving them time to calm down is imperative. You don't chase after them and try to continue a dialogue with somebody who's obviously flooded. If they're flooded like that, they need time to calm down. Once they're calmed down, then you can say, hey, I, I, I could see something happened that really upset you and I'd like to know more about that because it wasn't my intention to upset you. And gather more data about what it was that triggered that reaction so that you're able to come from a place of empathy rather than uh, reactiveness. And I know it can be really frustrating when you're in the middle of a conversation, it's important, it seems like you're making headway and the person just gets pissed off and takes off out of the room. I have been one of those people in my life. I have was one of those people, whenever I would get angry, I could not express myself. So instead of expressing myself, I would just leave because I just couldn't find the words to express what it was that was going on with me. So it is one of those things that we do and learning how to be empathetic for that reaction. It's just a sign of being flooded. And when a person is flooded, there's no point in having a dialogue. So recognize they're flooded, recognize that they need time to calm down and give them that space so that they can come back to a conversation and do come back to that conversation later. You know, come back to that person later and say, hey, I noticed, um, I could see that you were really upset. Are, are you in a place that you can talk about it now? Uh, I'm sorry that I upset you wasn't my intention. And you can start to move that dialogue to a different place. So it, be, it starts with taking ownership. And if you, if you come back, if you would just, you know, if, if you read my book, if you understand the model of um, the cycles of the heart, understand that when we get into that reactive place, when we get that old brain reactivity going, the first thing that happens is we feel like a victim or potential victim and we feel um, blamed and shamed and just bad. And so then we react and, um, hi James. And, um, when we react, we're going to react by either trying to please and placate that person or we're going to react by attacking. Either way, it, it's not healthy and there's not going to be a good result that comes from that. So learning how to move into taking ownership, which is the opposite of being in the victim place, of the conflict, to taking ownership of, um, hi Daryl, um, taking ownership of the situation enough to go, wait a second, I don't have to be reactive just because somebody else is reactive. If somebody else is upset, you know, I, I can be there and be empathetic and respectful even when they're not necessarily expressing that to me because it isn't about me. Taking ownership of that's not, uh, I'm not responsible for what a, that other person is feeling or saying. I am only responsible for how I respond to that. So responding with empathy and respect is the key to moving the dialogue into a place where you can actually learn something from each other and have an opportunity to connect and, and bridge that divide that makes that's so important for us to bridge these days. So 
Um, if you have any other thoughts and comments, I really appreciate your being here today. You can find out more about me at MelodyBrook.com. I also have a YouTube channel. I have a, a Melody Brook LMFT, LPC LMFT page as well as this page. And I have a page for my book, which is, Oh Wow, This Changes Everything. And I have a workbook that goes along with my book, which can take you deeper into that process. In any case, I really appreciate your being there to, here today. I'm here on Mondays at, at 4 Central Standard Time. I'm also with the 4 at 4 on Thursdays at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. But um, please leave any thoughts that you might have, any questions that you might have below, and I will see if I can get back to those um, later on if, if you haven't been watching this live. So thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you guys at another time. Hey, Daryl. <laughs>